Today we are going to continue to talk about SQL. A little bit of administrative first. Homework two is out on the course website. It's due next Monday. Please make sure to name your tables as outlined in the spec. We are using AutoGrader in Grayscope. So if the name of the tables don't match, it matches through some compile error. Also, as always, please use add for questions on the homework and lecture material. Um, this is the syntax you are gonna use to import file for homework two. First, uh, you want to create the table and then import the data. Um, first, you're gonna set the mode to CSV. CSV means a comma separated value. Uh, and then you want to import the data from that CSV file to the uh, to the table. Um, the last one is the syntax you want to use to um, is the general syntax to specify the path to file and the name of the table. Um, uh, do you have any questions before we uh, jump to the material of, of SQL? Uh, okay, we're gonna uh, talk about aliasing first. Uh, it's always a good style to rename attributes operation to more intuitive labels. And this one is essential for self-join. In self-join, we already say uh, from table A, comma table A, but uh, in this way, in the where clause, it's impossible for the SQL server to identify which A are you referring to. So you want to uh, rename them to from table A as T1 and table A as T2. And um, you can, it is without as in the from clause, it means uh, the as keywords can be omitted. So in the example below, we say from table as table name, but, it, uh, but we can actually say from table, table name for short. Filters, uh, these are two uh, keywords. Uh, for limit, it's gonna limit the amount of tuples returned. Uh, for this example, it will only return one tuple. If we uh, ignore the limit one first and take a look at the result return back select from table, uh, the limit one will only select the top one, top one tuple, uh, not any random tuple. Uh, for distinct, it will only uh, return dif different values. Um, for, for the data from the um, column name, it will get rid of all the duplicates and return the distinct values. Uh, now we're gonna talk about the difference between inner drone and outer drone. Um, there are three kinds of outer drone left join, right join, and full join. For the inner join, it will only return the intersection between the left table and right table. Uh, it will only return the matched rows. However, for the left join, it's gonna return every row from the left table, even though it's not matched. For the unmatched table, it's gonna fill in some nodes. And similarly for red drawn and full drawn. For full drawns, it's just gonna retain every row from the left table and right table. And if it's, it does not have any match, it's gonna fill in the nodes. Um, also, for the inner drawn, it's actually like drawn. Um, we already say the syntax for inner drawn is A, inner drawn B, but um, like in the examples um, or in the homework, we already say from A comma B, it's actually an um, implicit inner drawn. So you don't have to actually specify as inner drawn, like the, your drawn is inner drawn. Um, for the drawn semantics, you can think of drawn as nested loops. And we are gonna talk about this in more detail in the next slides. 
Uh, this way is obviously not the most efficient implementations are large database. And uh, in the uh, later the course, we're gonna talk about the hash drawn and sort merge drawn. Um, so uh, if the query say uh, from X1 to Xn, you're gonna iterate through every tuples in X1 first and then X2 and then finally Xn. And it will check if it satisfies the conditions specified in the weird clause. If it's true, we're gonna just output uh, just output that um uh, that row. If it's not, we're just gonna ignore it. Uh, we started from the uh, FWS. It means uh, we want to evaluate from first uh, and then where and finally select. Uh, from let you to specify um, which tables you want to use and um, where let you to specify the join conditions and finally select let you to say what column you want. And now finally reach to Fragos. Fragos um, also specify the execution order. And um, we already talked about from where and select, and we're gonna talk about a uh, group and having later uh, in the next slides. Um, a group by you can specify a group by is actually split the data into different groups with the same attributes. For example, we have uh, a database of students' home address. We can just go by by their zip code. So it will split the data into like different groups with the same zip code. And then we can use uh, the having clause. The having clause uh, operate on groups. It chooses which group to, it, it chooses to keep or remove the entire group. Uh, so for example, uh, we only want uh, to have groups that has uh, less than 10 students in that zip code. So we can see having count less than 10. So any group that has 10, uh, that has more than 10 tuples in that group will got removed. Um, there is a difference between the where clause and having uh, the where clause will like check every tuple in the data and say if it's uh, satisfy the weird constraint. If it's not, that tuple will get removed. Uh, however, for the having, it will check on every group. If that group is does not satisfy that constraint, the entire group will get removed. Um, order by, you can choose to order by some attribute and in ascending way or descending way. Uh, if you don't specify anything, it's, uh, the default one is ascending. Uh, and uh, usually the group by is um, used together with aggregates. So after you split the data into groups, you can like retrieve some aggregate information from that group, like what is uh, uh, the number of rows in that group or what the mean or max in that group. And we are going to talk about uh, aggregates uh, in the next slides of uh, in some later slides. Uh, group by is a powerful tool to handle categories. It will uh, group shows with the same value of an attribute into a bucket. And when you use group by, you have to be careful when selecting. Uh, you can only select attributes in group by or aggregates. Um, Otherwise, a SQLite will guess. It will arbitrarily pick a value and SQL Server will store an error. We're gonna show an example in the next slides about uh, like what will happen if you don't select attributes or aggregates. Um, okay, uh, yeah, this is the example. Like uh, there are two queries. Um, could anyone tell me uh, which query will work and which query will not?
Okay. Uh, uh I, I, I don't know. Uh, uh I, how um, do you... I, I think the chat is disabled, so people oh, like really? can't. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I, I don't know how to do that. Chris, can we do that? Um, so like one way to do that is I have to turn off the meeting and then everyone come back and join again. Then the chat function will be able after that. This. Okay. Then should we just you know go with the raising hand? You know. Yeah. If anyone have question, just feel free to raise your hand and unmute yourself to ask question. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I think I just revealed the answer before, right? Uh, so I'm just gonna continue to. Uh, uh, so for this one, uh, the first one is wrong because um, for every uh, as we group by student ID, we know that they are going to split into two groups with a, a student ID as John Doe and Mary Jean, and uh, if we uh, for every group, we are gonna only return a single uh, a single tuple from that group. So, uh, like it's okay if we choose student ID because for every group the student ID is the same. However, for the cost number, there are two different cost numbers and three different in the next group. So we don't know which cost number we want to choose. So as we talked before, uh, like for the sequel server, it will just Serene error, but SQLite will randomly pick one. So the first one is obviously wrong. However, for the second one, it will just like uh, count the number of rows in each group. So the first one is two, and the second one is three. Um, and here are some aggregates functions you are going you can use for the homework. Uh, aggregates will compute the summary values for a set of tuples. Uh, for a count, it will just count the number of tuples and sum will sum the uh, the sum of the tuples and min max will get the mean and max for that tuple and average um, will just take the average. They are very intuitive. Uh, okay, uh, that's all the slides we have prepared. Uh, do you have any questions? Otherwise, uh, Chris and I will uh, split you guys into two different um, break room and we are gonna go over the worksheet uh, questions. Great, if there's no any other question, we will just separate everyone into two break rooms and we will go over the worksheets uh, inside each break room. Um, do you guys know uh, where the worksheet is, right? It's uh, in the course website under the section, uh, under the section resources. And um, I'll give you like um, five minutes for the question one and then we can go over the solution, okay? Because it's a small meter, small break room, so we can like you're free to see anything.
Um, it's already five minutes. Do you want to start go over the question together, or do you want to take more time? You can vote for, vote for yes if you want to like start to go over the question together now. Um, okay. Uh, so for the first one, uh, it's an inner drawing, and the uh, condition is a dot a equal b dot b. Uh, so, uh, you see the nested loop we talked before, like for every, uh, like for the first row of A, we know that it don't satisfy the condition, and the second also don't. But for the uh, third one, yeah, it's, uh, um, there is, uh, there is another row in B that matches A, so, yeah, it's this one, this one. So we, we can output that row. So the first result is a uh, three, three. And so we start to go to the fourth, fourth row. There is also a matching in B table. So the second output is four, four. Uh, and also for the, uh, the last two rows in B table, uh, five and six does not have any matching in the C, in A table, so we're just gonna ignore them. Uh, for this one, uh, still you see inner drawing, but in this, but in this one we don't have any constraint. So, um, uh, so for the first, so if we start in the nested loop from the A table, for the first row is nice, right? Uh, First, first row is A, and then we go to the B table. Uh, the first row is, is three, and since it does not have any constraint, it's always true. So we have to put that in the first row. And then we go to the four. Yeah, still always true. In this way, we have to put every uh, combinations of A table and B table. So it's gonna be like, uh, also, if you have any questions, you can refer to ask. Um, and you will get the idea, we'll go, just have all the like product between the A table and B table. Uh, for the left order drawing, uh, do you want to, uh, does anyone want to say what his answer is? Um, okay, uh, first we want to like imp uh, include the uh, the result from the inner drawing is three, three and four, four. And for every unmatched row in the A table, we're gonna just fill in some nodes. So the unmatched row from the left table is one. And two. Uh, similarly, for the right order drawn, uh, still first include the result from the uh, inner drawn. And then for the unmatched row from the right table, it's five and six, and we are gonna fill in the north for them. Um, and for the full other drone, uh, still first the uh, the match rows from A and B table, and then the unmatched row from the left table, and unmatched row from the right table. Uh, the last two used union. Uh, union is a set union that eliminates duplicates. It will uh, add the result from the 
a um from uh, it will uh, like add the result from the table a and uh the result from table b and pull them together and um in the process of putting them together union will eliminate the duplicates however the union all will just keep the duplicates so uh the select a from a is um, one two, two three and four and um the elements from B is three, four, five, six. And since um, three and four already shows up in the results, so we don't want the duplicates. So we're just gonna add five and six. Uh, however, in the unit all, we can have the duplicates. So it's one, two, three, four, three, four, five, and six. Uh, uh, do, I have, do you guys have any questions about this? Otherwise, we can. Uh, I'll give you another uh, five minutes, and then we can go over the our second question.
Um, it's already five minutes. Do you want to start to go over the question now? Okay. Uh, for this question, first we want to uh, find all the movies that the actor Patrick has appeared in. Uh, so first we have three tables, movies, actors, and X-Scene. Uh, the X-Scene connects the two, uh, two tables to specify which actors perform in which movie. Uh, first we can, uh, uh, since we want to specify the movies that actor Patrick has appeared in, uh, obviously we have to connect this, we have to join these three tables together. Uh, so. So from movies, actors, X in. And then we, first we want to join them together so that table becomes like uh, every row is, uh, is about a movie and a, a actor. Uh, so, um, So, uh, in this way, we um, acting is uh, we we connect acting dot mid to the movies dot id so that we can uh, get all the informations from movie and uh, and all the informations from the actors, uh, and then we want to find. Uh, which movies that actor Patrick has appeared in. So we just need to say a dot name equals Patrick Stewart. Uh, and this will enable us to find all the movies that uh, Patrick has appeared in. And then I want to ask to find the number of movies and out of uh, average ratings. So if we want to find all the movies, we just need to select count all the rows. And for the average ratings, we can do average uh, ratings is from the, uh, the movie table. So yeah, uh, this is a whole query. Um, and for the second one, it's very similar to the first one. Still, um, still we can consider the uh, last part first. Uh, all the movies that has been the growth of all the movies that has been over some large number, and we still want to connect these two uh, tables in the same way for the first question. So from and join in the same way as we did for the first one. Now we want to all the we, we want all the movies that have a uh, gross uh, over this number. So um, uh, so for all the movies that has has gross. Um, at least this number, we want to find the minimum age of, of the actor. Uh, this way we can just select the minimum age of actor. No, this is the whole query. 
uh, for the last one, um, what is the budget of each movie released in year 2017, whose oldest actor is less than 30? Uh, still, we want to find all the movies that has been released in year 2017 first. To find them, um, we also need to draw all the three tables together in the same way. And then we specify the year is 2017. Uh, and then uh, it's a tricky part. Um, how do we find? Uh, we want to find all the movies uh, whose oldest actor is less than thirteen. Uh, from the oldest actor, it's kind of intuitive that we want the max age less than less than thirty. So. Uh, we can group all the data by their movie ID. So in this way, uh, um, after we do the drawing for all the three tables, we can the tables will look like movie A, uh, actor A, and then and then movie A, actor B, and movie B, actor A, or something like that. So we want to group by the uh, movie ID first. So these two will become into the same group. So um, our group will, have, will be the same movie with all the actors that are in this movie. And uh, we can use having to specify like we want age to be less than 30. Um, um, Uh, in this way, we can find all the movies that is released in year 2017 and uh, its actors are less than 30. And then we just need to specify the select clause. Uh, in the select clause, uh, we do sum and budget to, uh, to get uh, the budget for, uh, for the movie. Uh, so the main point for this question is that um, the, uh, the most important table is X in, but X in only specify the MID and AID. If you want to uh, get more information for, uh, for the movies with that MID and actor with that AID, we need to drawn with the movie table and the actor table. So, so to gather information. Um, if you guys don't have any question for this problem, we can start to do the uh, third problem. And I'll, I'll still give you uh, five minutes for this one.
Uh, since I started uh, 16, I just got to start to talk about this, the last question. Uh, as the title suggests, we are going to use self join for this problem. Uh, so to self join first, uh, employ is, yeah, and this shows the importance of using it, I see. Uh, employ is E2. And since we want to uh, like find all the distinct pairs of the employees with the same boss, we want to find where their boss is the same. But in this way, uh, we can have some uh, pairs with the same uh, with the same employee ID. So to like get rid of, get rid of all the uh, the pairs with the same employee ID, we just want to like uh, uh, this uh, this example is very simple, but the most confusing idea is uh, maybe for this part, uh, you can also write uh, e2.id greater, uh, e1.id greater than e2.id. Um, but you cannot, uh, but you cannot uh, write e1.id not equal to uh, e2.id in this case, because uh, this can uh, lead to some duplicate pairs. Mm. Uh, yeah, this is all prepared for today's section. If you have any questions, you can stay and ask. Otherwise, uh, yeah, this, um, yes, this is all this class is about. Okay.